All right, so we are here with Bill Lee um, in Brockton at the Brockton Rocks Clubhouse here. Um, I was at the game. and You're One of the 6,125 I was. And the first thing I have to say is, was it as effortless as it looked? Yes. Fair enough. Everyone, uh, they said, how can you do that? I said, well, I'm better than them. I'm a pitcher. I know how to pitch. It's, it's all a matter of having teammates behind you and throwing to their weaknesses. I did not know their weaknesses, but the fact that they were here, they had weaknesses. Okay. Right? Fair enough. They weren't playing in we weren't playing in the stadium. You know what I'm saying? So you've, you've got to realize that if you throw strikes and make them hit the ball and your team plays well behind you, you win. And that's it. I, my dad said, if you pitch nine innings and never walk a guy, you will never lose. I played 14 years in the big leagues, and that never happened. Every game I lost, I walked somebody. So how Fair about enough. that? Fair enough. And for me, the, the, one of the more fun things is to see you hit during the game. So I was excited to see that. Now, as a pitcher that loves to hit, how do you feel about the DH? Is it is, is it very bad? Specialization breeds extinction. Our Buckminster Fuller said that, and uh, he said a lot of different mathematician. And I believe in that statement. You have to be a generalist. You have to be able to do many different things in your life to survive. If you get over specialized, you become extinct. So I try to teach generalization and teach guys how to be basic mechanics on their car, how to. Uh, to how to walk in the wilderness, to orienteer themselves so they don't get lost, how to plan ahead for uh, really cold weather, you know, and, uh, and I always dress for the bottom line. I mean, I'm out there in case it does get cold, my car does break down, and I have the ability to communicate so I can get by. And I've, I've gotten by my whole life, and I'm going to, that's basically what I teach kids. Fair enough. Yeah. Um, I've, I've always wanted to ask you this. If um, every, you always hear Red Sox Yankees rivalry, obviously. Do you feel that now, with all the money in baseball and all the money that the players make, that a lot of that is, is media driven as opposed to when you played? It seemed like there was real disdain for people. It's media driven. I agree with you 100%. It's, uh, it's, there is no natural rivalries like there used to be. And uh, the, the whole thing of concept of sport, I believe, has been media driven in that respect to try and orient sales and everything else. You know, in the old days, we did not like the Yankees. I mean, we, we were separated by the umpires. We were not allowed to, to fraternize with them, be around them in batting practice. We had to be off the field. Nowadays, it's all changed and stuff. And I think that's a, that's a detriment, you know, you know, for its... We were different back then. I, I don't know. Maybe that's a softer, gentler nation, but I don't believe in that. I, I truly still dislike the Yankees. I mean, I carry Nettles' wallet picture right here, you know, and there's sawdust. See there? From I was bats, working, right? From I was working okay. today. Yeah, I was. But there's Nettles right there, and he's <laughs> in my wallet, and he'll be up against the right cheek of my ass for eternity. And the Fair smell enough. and the view do not improve for him. So that's the way I, I think. And Fair enough. Say I don't like the Yankees. I don't like it. I mean, we lost to the Jets. I haven't gotten over that yet. Uh, I haven't gotten over losing to the New York uh, Giants that game with a guy caught the ball and escaped from the pocket and did all that. I mean, I'm still shocked that we haven't won more Super Bowls here. But that's and, the way I am. And final question, if, if the coach sees fit, will you be back this year with the Rocks? I, uh, I will be, you know, I mean, uh, I may not, I'll be pitching somewhere. I don't know where, but I am only concerned about this Sunday. At 9.30, I promised Donald Drown, an old truck driver from Vermont, who's lost two ball players this year, that I would play center field for him so he'd have a team. And that's just off of a college boulevard on the Fort Myers, uh, Cape Coral line. There's a ballpark there, and at 9.30, I'll be on the field Sunday. At 3 o'clock, I'll be pitching in my, uh, for my over-45 team down there. So I have a doubleheader on Sunday, and that's all I can concerned about. So I'm not drinking this weekend. Oh, no. And, uh, but sometimes you, gotta, you have to have your priorities right. I hear you. Got me? All right, and, one, and one final thing. I don't know if you remember, but, but I'm talking 1992. It was a long time ago. Medway. 
you did a baseball camp. It was you and Bernie Carbo. Oh my God. And this guy right here pulling up, pu pulling over the center field wall. I know, I know you weren't giving Jensen? me. I, I know you weren't giving me your best stuff. You couldn't have been, but it, it was. And it no. was amazing. When I do clinics, the key to this game is to make hitters look good because you love the game. And I gave up a home run to an Indian chief on a reservation in New Brunswick on a pitch, a hanging changeup, which is the only thing he could hit. And I had all the little Indians around me, and I said, watch this. This chief, this is the only pitch he can hit. He hit the home run. He ran around the bases. He was happy. So you were a chief for one day, too. Thanks. Awesome. <laughs> well, here with Bill Lee, uh, back to you in the studio. Thanks.